It's Friday the 13th again, and Jason Voorhees isn't the only one spreading fear because the hit documentary In Search of Darkness is back with a three-day flash sale. It's a four-hour-plus retrospective on 80s horror. It's one of the highest-grossing indie documentaries in history and was even nominated for a Rondo Hatton Award for Best Documentary. It has an incredible cast of over 45 contributors like John Carpenter, Lloyd Kaufman, and Joe Bob Briggs. And also, someone else you might recognize. I think The Shining is probably the best performance in any horror film, maybe ever. I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. Oh boy, does he go off the rails in that one. Here's Johnny! <laughs> With this package, you'll get the film, two posters, a postcard, a digital download, and the soundtrack. Click the link in the description and you can get it all for $47.99. But it's only good for the weekend. Happy Friday the 13th. Action! Focus! Honor! It's Martial Arts! Today's video, Bloodsport! Next video, Kung Pao versus Kung Fu Hustle! Alright, it's Martial Arts. Today we're gonna do Bloodsport. Oh! That reminds me. I, I can't do this one, guys. I actually have to participate in a Kumite. I'm actually going. It's a real thing. It's a real tournament that I'm doing. Okay. I'm not making it up. It's a real thing. I didn't mm. misread our schedule and assume Justin was in this episode and then forget to watch Bloodsport again. I'm actually participating in a very real tournament. So I, I, I can't do this review. I'm sorry. All right, we'll have fun with that. Yeah, Thank you. I, I think I'm going to do pretty good. I'll, well, I'll send right. you guys updates. Yeah, keep us posted. It sounds like... Uh, I, yeah. I will keep you posted at my very real Kumite. Okay. Bye, guys. Be All careful. Right. So anyway, my bonus pick of the week is Enter the Dragon. I mean, I just wanted to go with the obvious just to get it out there because this is everybody's gateway to martial arts cinema. It was probably the first martial arts movie I saw. Yeah, I me think. too, I think, yeah. actually. Yeah, and you just can't go wrong with Enter the Dragon. It's so classic. It's got that 70s exploitation feel with the music and everything. And it's not just Bruce Lee, but you got Jim Kelly and John Saxon and this great assortment of characters. It, this movie is basically the precursor to Mortal Kombat because yeah. it's a tournament that's hosted by the villain the only thing it's missing is like the outworld and stuff yeah, and like that. Yeah, stealing souls and yeah. revenant skeleton ninjas. But the final battle, I mean, he fights a guy with a claw hand in a maze of mirrors. Yeah. I mean, how awesome is that? Yeah, especially like when I was a kid watching like, you know, playing Street Fighter and Mortal mm -hmm. Kombat and everything. I, I saw this after that, but, you know, it, it's like watching a video game. Yeah, basically, it's a video game plot. I mean, this is yeah. where it all came from. So anyway, so anyway, uh, blood, sp blood sports. I was almost gonna say blood fist because I always confuse it. I can never get those straight. Like, there's yeah. blood fist, and then there's kickboxer, which also has Jean Claude Van Damme. Yeah, so. which I like kickboxer better than blood sport. I just think it was like a a more memorable movie. But I feel like blood sport is like that's Jean Claude Van Damme's Terminator. Okay. Like, this is his movie. This is the one that mm -hmm. I feel like he's most known for. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he's done other... I mean, Street Fighter, of course. Yeah. But Bloodsport is Jean-Claude Van Damme, I think, in the purest sense. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a tournament movie, so it's as generic as it gets. Yeah. Where it's just you put a bunch of people together and fight, and you know what? I have no problem with that whatsoever yeah. because I just love this type of format. Yeah, the only thing, I guess, like... Uh, I don't, the fighting in it is kind of meh. Mm -hmm. I think all the fight scenes like just aren't really, mm -hmm. especially compared to like when we did, you know, uh, Drunken Master. Mm -hmm. the oh, fight it's nothing like that level. Way, but, um, yeah. yeah, and this one is just kind of two guys fight. Most of the time it's not Jean-Claude Van Damme or anybody, Bolo mm -hmm. Jung or, or the other guy who's like his friend. It's usually just two dudes fighting each other. And yeah. someone always ends up bleeding from the mouth and then the mm -hmm. scene's over. The fights are just kind of Except for like uh, a few of them. It's just, I mean, there's there's good fighting in it. Yeah, but it's not it's not the best. No, I yeah. just uh, I don't know. So I guess we should go over the plot. It's okay. about it's. I mean, there's not much. But you don't need much plot. Yeah. Because the thing about these tournament movies, like what I love about them, is you know who's gonna fight in the end. Yeah. And you you can't stop watching until there's a winner. Mm -hmm. So it kind of just I don't know. It's it's an addicting formula. It's based on the life of Frank Dukes. 
Okay. He's apparently a uh, martial artist slash special forces mm -hmm. guy who fought in the Kumite. And is Kumite even a real thing or no? It, apparently it's all bullshit. Okay. It's just this dude who pretty much went to Hollywood and was like, yeah, so I'm a special forces. I can't tell you about it because, you know, it's it's secret and it's classified. And I went to Hong Kong and fought in the Kumite. Mm. Let's make a movie about me. And then... <laughs> They did, I guess. Okay. Let's just say I never heard of the Kumite, but I have heard of the Mike Mite. <laughs> <laughs> well, whether or not it was real, it's still made for a, a, an entertaining yeah. movie. Because this movie, I mean, it's just got everything you want. It's got fights. It's got montages. It's got 80s music. Like yeah. Stan Bush. Stan Bush provides mm -hmm. an amazing soundtrack for mm -hmm. this movie. I mean, it's no The Touch, but it's still. It's, yeah. You know, the, it's, uh, what's it called? Is uh the, the Kumite or fight to survive or whatever mm -hmm, when they yeah. when that starts going in it's just this movie has a lot of slow motion fights mm -hmm, too like mm -hmm. everything is just like the like the spinning kick and people like with blood flying yeah, out of their yeah. mouth that's like the that's why you call it a blood sport yeah pretty like that much one. right I also love the dude um I think it's when he the one guy who's fighting against Chong Li who's Bolo Young mm -hmm. and he stomps his leg and it shows like the bone coming out oh, of his leg oh yeah yeah that, that's one of the most memorable things. I remember when I was a kid, my friend came up and said, mm. like, yeah, I watched Bloodsport, and there's a part where this guy's knee splits open mm. and his bone's coming out. And oh. I was like, whoa, what? Yeah. And I didn't know it was a movie. I thought it was, like, a fighting tournament that he was actually watching, I guess. Oh. Because at that time, I guess, you know, like, uh, UFC, the first, like, before it became, like, a sport, UFC was pretty damn close to a Kumite because mm. they just had any fighters come in. That's why I feel like... Frank Dukes probably went to some place where there was some sort of underground fight and he probably got his ass kicked and then he came away from it and decided instead of being a fighter he was going to be a I'll make a movie about myself because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it just seems like bullshit yeah I don't know Yes, I don't know. I mean, I noticed in the movie it says based on a true story, but I never really thought much of it. I just yeah, thought, like, yeah. well, it's a movie, so it's, it's, it, it's you know. I, I watched a thing about, like, because nowadays, like, there's YouTube videos and stuff about Frank Dukes and how he's, like, a total sham and all this stuff. But I feel like back then it's, like, you could go to Hollywood with a story and be like, yeah, I did this, mm. like, make a movie about it or whatever. Isn't he kind of like the inspiration for Johnny Cage? Um, uh, not not, um, not him himself, but... Jean-Claude Van Damme in yeah. the movie. Yeah, because the whole thing was originally they were... Like, Mortal Kombat, when they mm. were trying to come up with the name, one of the ideas was Kumite. Mm. And then they, I guess they were going to get Jean-Claude Van Damme in it, but he ended up doing Street Fighter the movie, I think, uh, instead. Because yeah. on the the side of the arc, the, the Mortal Kombat arcade, the original, it has, like, Johnny Cage and that, like, yeah. that jumping kick. And, and the jumping kick in Bloodsport, I think, is the, the same. I think if you matched them up, it's kind of like... Um, it's kind of like in, a, I think it was Kyle Reese in Terminator. He's yeah. Metal Gear. And then Predator, I think, is on Contra. Like, they kind of... Yeah, these... it's Arnold Schwarzenegger from yeah. Predator. Yeah, they did that a lot, I guess. And also, I mean, the... Oh, I just got a text from Tony at the Kumite. He said he he won his first match. He killed a dude. Good we're for him. We're friends with a murderer now. Yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. Tony killed a guy. Put it on silent. There we mm -hmm. go. Yeah. But uh, I this movie it's it's a kind of a cheesy like mm -hmm. uh, martial arts eighties. If Jean Claude Van Damme is is he's his facial expressions are ridiculous. Yeah. Like, why does he take it so far? Like, <laughs> like he's just like, ah! yeah, where he's like, yelling, when he gets, uh, what is it? He gets blinded and he's like, Ugh! like oh, his yeah, yeah. face is so insane. And it's slowed down. So it's yeah. like really like he, he. At least that part kind of makes sense. Cause at the end, the, the villain throws like a powder in his face that like, yeah. is almost like a mace or something where like it just blinds him for a bit. And like, while that happens, his strategy, because there's almost like nothing he could do, so he basically just decides, I'm gonna make my foot everywhere. Yeah. Like, so he does this kick after another kick after another kick, and you're just like, whoa! Like, yeah. like it, it, he almost becomes a human fan. <laughs> that part is, it. He, he, first off, it looks kind of weird when he does that with the kicks. His face is weird, because he's like, yeah. And stuff, and there it cuts to uh, the cops and the reporter, and she's like laughing. 
Okay. at that part and i was like is she laughing because like wow. his face looks goofy or like what's <laughs> going on by the way this is also i think this might be the beginning of it but jean-claude van damme has this thing in like a lot of his movies at least like he's always dating a blonde reporter or a, mm. a female reporter like okay there's chun Li in street fighter the movie uh -huh. is a reporter uh universal soldier he's dating he dates a reporter like she's huh. the one he falls in love with and then in this I should probably make up some bullshit to those guys. Send. Oh. Tony fought off three dudes at once, and Forrest Whitaker is chasing him through the streets of Hong Kong right now, and they're trying to catch him to bring him back to America. Okay, cool. Good job, Tony. But uh, yeah, he's. I, I think the, the one thing that always gets me too is uh, in the beginning of the movie when it's telling the story about how he meets uh, Tanaka and he's a kid, but it's like the guy they got to play the kid version of Frank Dukes doesn't look anything like Jean-Claude Van Damme. Oh, but they're yeah, trying yeah. to make him talk like Jean-Claude Van Damme and he oh. sounds weird. He's like, I don't want to be just a punching bag. How come you coach him but not me? I brought you here to help me train my son. Don't question me. If you expect me to be punching bad, you can forget about our deal. It sounds so goofy. It's just like, <laughs> and that scene yeah, seems yeah. like it goes on for like ever. The the like he walks into the house and he sees the wife and uh, Tanaka's mm. wife, and then it cuts to like the flashback, and then the flashback goes on forever. It feels <laughs> like. So yeah, we talk about Van Dam. We got to talk about uh, Bolo Young just a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, he plays Chong Lee, not Chun Lee, but Chong Lee. Yeah. And he's uh, he's also from Enter the Dragon. He was one of the main. Yeah, bad guys that's there. right. He was. Um, yeah. Was he the guy who Bruce Lee, like stomps on or whatever? Um, or, I or? think he's the one who John Saxon kills. Okay. I think I think I could be remembering wrong. I think John I Saxon. I haven't seen it in a really long time, actually. Now. That yeah. I'm about it. But yeah, he he was one of the the. He's one of the main bad guys in that one. Yeah, that that guy. He's he's yeah. so intimidating. He killed like, someone in the tournament. I think he does. That's what yeah, yeah, he kills. That's what I'm thinking of. In, in this movie, it's kind of the same thing where he's just this really cruel villain. And you know, '80s villains are like that, where they're cruel for no reason at yeah. all. Where it's like he kills a guy in the fighting tournament. And usually, they don't they don't even die. Even even in this illegal tournament or whatever, they still usually live. But he kills this guy, and then everybody kind of like stops mm -hmm. everything they're doing. And then he gets like pissed off that they're not applauding him. Yeah. And it's like there's no extent to how evil this guy will be. Well, like we said and earlier, then, he stomps the guy's knee out. Yeah. So his yeah. bone comes out. Uh, yeah, he stomps the head of the friend, too. Yeah, the, the friend survives, though, yeah. right? Yeah. But okay, so the friend, we talk about him. Uh, Donald Gibb is the actor. He's a fun character. I mean, he's yeah. kind of like a biker type. Yeah, he was, he's definitely like a. Uh, I like that the friendship that he yeah. gets with Frank Dukes. Like he starts off like you think he's gonna be like this jerk. Yeah. Uh, that he's gonna, you know, Frank Dukes is gonna have to fight because he's like hitting on the girl on the bus mm -hmm. and everything. But then they end up becoming friends. They play Karate Champ. Yeah, they the do. arcade yeah. version. They should <laughs> play Street Fighter. Yeah, right. If it was, yeah. 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 <laughs> you think that's like at the Kumite they have a Karate Champ machine <laughs> still? Just splice in Street Fighter yeah. the movie and that. Maybe Tony's playing the the Karate Champ machine mm. right now. Mm. Since he's at the Kumite. Yeah. What was the bad guy's name in Bloodsport? Oh. Sen. Oh, I just got another message. Tony murdered Bolo Young. <laughs> I guess he's doing pretty good at that Kumite. Hmm. I mean, then, then there's like all those sub characters, the ones that exist just for like one fight. And each one of them has their own unique look, their own unique style, and they all have their own pre-fight taunt. So mm -hmm. it's a lot like a video game. I mean, this is another like video game movie yeah. without a video game. There's also, I, I like in the beginning of the movie where they're showing all the fighters and stuff and like, you know, they show Bolo Young and he's punching ice and there's the the one dude who he, he like jumps up into a tree and starts elbowing coconuts and stuff. But then they show like two dudes fighting at what looks like a men's retreat in the woods and like, huh. and it's just like two dudes fighting each other. Mm -hmm. And then there's like one guy who's like, yeah. And it's just this like hairy dude. <laughs> and it, it, like, I, I don't know why that popped in, like why I saw that and just started like laughing about it. But it, it's just like, they show these guys doing these amazing feats 
and like, you know, breaking hard objects and stuff. And then they just show two guys fighting in the middle of the woods at like a camping trip, it looks like. <laughs> like, are those guys in the Kumite? And yeah, they're just yeah. like, <laughs> what's oh. that camping trip? <laughs> Yeah, and there's the training scene where like he's got all the ropes attached to every limb and he's yeah. just being pulled. I mean, that one looks pretty brutal. That's the thing. Oh, and then the splits come in too, which I mean, Johnny Cage, oh, yeah. he, he even does the split well, we were just punch in the balls and yeah, everything. Yeah, I totally forgot because we were just talking about Johnny Cage. Um, yeah, I totally forgot to bring that up. So he does the Johnny Cage ball punch, which I which has to be where Johnny Cage got it because yeah. he does the split when he does it. And this this guy is the main protagonist in the movie. And this is definitely something he does that makes you not like him at all. Yeah. Like, like, come on. Like, he doesn't just hit him in the balls, but imagine, okay, okay, imagine how much it hurts already getting hit in the balls, but if, if it was Van Damme, like, yeah. just slamming you the and ball, he, like, his He uppercuts, <laughs> like, to the point where, like, his fist goes, like, up this dude's asshole. Oh, my like, God. Like, he punched that guy's balls into him. Yeah, so it's like, did, does he, did he die after that? Like, what happened? <laughs> because... After, like, that is the one thing where you're like, okay, well, he is no way a likable character. And even though this is, like, some illegal tournament or whatever, it's like that move has to disqualify you. I yeah. Mean, there is no, like... <laughs> How could that just be okay? For... Yeah, that, that's the thing. Like, if you think about it, if they're allowed to kick in the balls, everyone in the Kumite would just punch in the balls yeah. and kick in the ball. Like, you wouldn't try to hit anywhere else. You'd yeah. be like, okay, I'm gonna have to fight this guy. I'm just gonna kick him right in the fucking dick. Like, oh, the first thing I'm gonna Jesus do. Christ. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that scene really did stick out. It was just kind of like, yeah, I don't like, know what why, was that about. Like. It... <laughs> I guess too, like it makes more sense for me with Johnny Cage because Johnny Cage is kind of an asshole in the game. Yeah, like he's this cocky, like arrogant. Yeah, the, the hero you know. should be the one who fights honorably. Yeah, and then that makes it it makes more sense when the villain fights dishonorably when he blinds him. Mm -hmm. You know, that's it, it kind of just it, it throws the balance off. Yeah. And now I think I think the hero is just as shitty as the villain. So he just. I mean, you kind of forget about that part as it goes on, but it's just I don't know. It, it's. I a, mean, to be honest. Frank Dukes is actually kind of awful if you think about it. I mean, the first thing he does is he just ditches on the military. Mm. You can't mm. like just leave the military, mm. but he just runs out of there. Uh -huh. He goes and is like, I have to take a shower. And they're like, okay. And then he's just gone. Huh. And then he goes to Hong Kong and then to the point where they have like the FBI chasing him or whatever, mm -hmm. which is, uh, you know, Forrest Whitaker. And it's like, this is a, a federal offense that he committed just uh -huh. so he could be in this tournament. Yeah. And then they're totally cool with it later. Uh-huh. Like, they chase him all through Hong Kong. It gets all slapstick and goofy. And then at the end, they're like, you're coming with us. He beats up a bunch of cops. Then he goes in. All right, this guy sucks. Yeah, I mean, they, go just... to, they go to tase him with those giant fucking tasers. Too. Yeah. And he ricochets the taser to two more cops. And then they're like, all right, Frank, you could fight in the Kumite, I guess. And we're going to come and watch. <laughs> so now the cops are sitting there watching him fight in the Kumite. And then they're buddies after that. <laughs> after he just, like, you led know, them through all this shit. I mean, this movie makes no sense, but <laughs> but it's great. It's it, Frank it's, Dukes, man. Like, what's the military going to do to him, man? They're gonna, yeah. He'll kill them. <laughs> he will kill everyone in the military. <sighs> well, anything left with uh, Bloodsport? Um, nah, I mean... I don't, like, like I said, I, I always confuse this movie with, with Kickboxer, but I like mm. Kickboxer so you too, yeah. had some goofy, it has the scene where he's drunk dancing in the bar. Uh, <laughs> it's got like, you know, Tong Po, who I think Tong Po is more, he was scarier. And also I like the ending fight scene in Bloodsport where they had the dipped, uh, they mm. dipped the, the gloves in glass and everything. And they had that crazy fight. Is that Bloodsport or Kickboxer? That's Kickboxer. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Kickboxer, sorry. I was going to say, um, I was like, whoa, I don't remember. <laughs> no, yeah, that's in Kickboxer. Yeah. But it's like these two movies are very similar. I just, I think yeah. Kickboxer's more fun. I, I just that. like the idea of it more. Mm. I should see Kickboxer again next. It's good. Yeah. Mm. I like, I really like Kickboxer. They yeah. remade it too, which with Jean-Claude Van Damme's in it, but he doesn't play the main character. He trains the main character. Mm. And uh, Batista's in it. But it's, you know, Bloodsport, it's it's a classic, but mm -hmm. it's stupid in parts. Yeah, but it, it's, it's dumb, but it's great. It's that 80s cheese and everything yeah. like that. And it's whatever. It's, it's fucking Bloodsport. Yeah. You, you're going to have just... to watch it if you want to watch yeah. Jean-Claude Van Damme. It's, like a, it's basically an essential, even though it's not as good as some of his other ones, I think. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I mean, if you don't want anything serious, if you're not looking for a good plot or anything, you just want to see some fighting and some just, you know, you know overall cheesiness and just, it's fun. Like, give it a watch. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, no, dude. Tony just messaged me. He got killed in the Kumite. Oh, he's dead. Tony's dead. He just messaged me to tell me. Oh, well, he's dead. Yeah, rest in peace, Tony. Gone but not forgotten. All right, time to go to Greenland. Don't you know that you are a shooting star? Don't you know? Oh, yeah. Don't you know that you are a shooting Tony? And all the world will love you just as long, as long as you are.